but first it was an unprecedented display of community spirit. 200 mothers and another 200 of their children marched through the streets of Norlamboy this week, angry at the closure of their local maternity ward. The ward will soon be without a doctor and can't operate until a replacement's found. It's a problem being faced by regional hospitals around the country. There just aren't enough obstetricians to go around. Daniel Parry caught up with some of the pregnant women facing the prospect of flying hundreds of kilometres to give birth. The maternity ward is the lifeblood of any regional hospital. 200 babies are born here in Gove every year. 70% are Indigenous. For the women of East Arnhem and the women of Nullumboy, we're a huge link to their land, to their families, to their birthrights. Well, for the Yolna women, they have their family able to stay for some of the time. We assist them to have a smoking ceremony, which is women's only cultural business. So how much sleep did you get last night? It's a birthing experience unlike anywhere else in Australia. And new mums like Gove Hospital nurse Mary Arcol couldn't be happier with their treatment. This is my fourth baby at Gove Hospital and I would not have a baby anywhere else. But the hospital's two GP obstetricians are leaving and the ward is being closed until they're replaced. The women of Gove are furious. We want doctors now! We want doctors now! Mums turned out in their hundreds this week to make their opposition clear. We want now! Just really angry because I'm due in September, which is still a while away, but I'm, I know that we'll have to travel out of Gove. I have a lot of friends who are having babies very soon and I feel very sorry for them having to go out of town to have their babies. Don't close the maternity ward in Nolanboy. Here, Yolngu women and the midwives of Nolanboy work together. From the end of this month, pregnant women will have to fly to either Darwin or Catherine in their 37th week and deliver their babies hundreds of kilometres from home. As a mother of three children, if I need to go to Darwin to have a baby, who will look after my three children? I can't, I can't resolve every issue. I understand this causes disruption, it's, you know, there's connections to family, connections to... A group of determined young mothers and midwives organised an emergency town meeting this week to grill politicians and the health department about the plan. A, it is not safe when you lose your local unit, and B, it is not the only option. I can assure you that absolutely every option to get doctors here is being explored. The health department says it's doing everything it can, but so far no one has signed up. We've written to every single doctor in Australia who's got the qualifications to come here. We've got 23 recruitment or locum agencies doing that. We're directly contacting New Zealand and Great Britain to try and get doctors to come and, and work here. And we've substantially increased the package. Now, we're, we're looking in excess of $300,000 a year to come and uh, work in the public sector and be a doctor and go. Indigenous health researcher Leslie Barclay thinks the value of local birthing services is being underestimated. She says studies in Canada and New Zealand have proven midwives could keep the ward open on their own, provided high-risk patients were flown out early. The small unit study in Australia and international evidence would suggest that primary units where midwives provide care for normal healthy women have excellent and better results than large tertiary hospitals for women and for babies. But the government says it's not prepared to take the risk. The problem I've got is if something goes wrong and a child dies or a mother dies, I don't think I'll be able to live with myself if I haven't made the right decision. That leaves women like Pam McKenzie with few options. She doesn't want to fly to Darwin after having her first baby, Callum, in Gove. Everything just went magically. It was just a wonderful experience and we really, really wanted to, to have the same experience again. But if all else fails and the positions don't get filled here at Gove District Hospital, then we will, will, we will fly over to Darwin. Stateline can reveal the government has agreed to extend its assistance to mums like Pam McKenzie. It's now agreed to pay for all pregnant women to fly a carer with them when they give birth. We understand a lot of women there that don't have the social network and they don't want to be isolated down here in Darwin. So we're prepared to fly them in, 
fly them back and fly with them an escort if they require so. But there'll be no such help for Selena and James Davies. They've decided against Darwin and will fly to Canberra instead. And so we've decided to go closer to family. Going into state we'll get zero. We won't get anything. We're very prepared to have our baby here. We're 28 weeks along and, and now being told we have to make other arrangements made it extremely difficult. Most children from the Aboriginal community of Yurikala are born at Gove Hospital about 15 kilometres away by road. Senior women here have for the first time revealed the spiritual significance of the hospital site. That's where the two sisters put their stick on the ground and a fountain of water arose from the, the ground which marks the symbol of being a mother. These strong women of Yurikala say it'll be deeply distressing for young Yolnu mothers to leave their country to give birth. That's going to be very frightening, I tell you now. Some of these ladies who are going to be future mothers have never been to Darwin, can't talk English that well, and they're going to have difficulties. Yolngu doesn't fly. Yolngu states. This is the accommodation being offered to women who come in to give birth in Darwin. Their stay here at Golden Glow Cottages will be free or will only involve a minimal cost to the mothers. Most rooms and bathrooms are shared. They're basic but clean and comfortable. Golden Glow, they've got fantastic facilities. They look after the places and they provide suitable accommodation for women. With only nine weeks to go, time has run out for Selena Davies. But she hasn't given up hope a doctor will eventually be found. In the meantime, she and her fellow mothers are doing their best to sell the virtues of life in one of Australia's most remote towns. The fishing's great, the lifestyle is wonderful. Um, we have 200 births here a year, so there's lots of opportunities to develop skills and, um, and meet a whole range of people. So I would say just come and help us out safe, wonderful place to bring children up. There, all the mothers would just absolutely love you. <laughs> Daniel Parry reporting there.